Hey folks, welcome to the Unihosted YouTube channel. My name is Fernando and today I'm going to show you how you can upgrade the firmware on your Unified devices. There are several reasons of why you need to do this. First of all, security. Sometimes, uh, well, any vendor introduces security patches on the hardware devices. So installing or updating the firmware is important. Uh, maybe the device is having some performance or other kind of issues. And with a firmware update, uh, it may help you to solve these problems. Maybe you need to upgrade the firmware to be compatible with your Unify controller. So I'm going to show you the different ways on how you can update the firmware on your Unify devices. Let's get to it. All right, folks, let's begin with the update processes. And the first and easiest method to update your Unify device is just getting into the Unify controller and listing all your Unify devices. If your controller has internet access, it will be able to check the Unify uh, servers and see what are the newest versions for your Unify hardware. And uh, like you can see over here, it's saying click to update. This means that there is a newer version for this U6 Plus access point. Now there's a setting that you can enable. And if I click over here, we can see that this is the version that is running right now. Uh, there's a setting that I can enable here. It says enable auto update. Okay, so if I go here, device updates and settings, this setting um, of the auto update was on the settings tab before now is here. If you have a Unify uh, network application that is host on a cloud key or maybe a cloud gateway or any of the other controllers that you can find that is not the standalone network application, probably you will see the um, Unify update or the management of the updates in the control plane. So where all the other uh, things not related to the network application itself are managed. Uh, for example, the uh, update of the Unify OS server and the firmware updates for your devices. Now here I can do two things. If I just want to have a free for all situations here and say, hey, go ahead and um, automatically update my devices, I can enable this option. And I can also use the early access release channels, just like you can do with the network application um, that you can, you, need, you must be enrolled into the early release uh, channel updates. Uh, this is done in this unify.ui uh, site really easy to do, uh, but you can use this option if you want the newest update, but be careful with this. Basically, it's like beta testing with your Unify devices and you can have some issues. If I just go ahead and enable this probably um, and I click check for updates, again, the Unify server will check against the Unify servers and it will find or see if there is any new update, okay? I can just go ahead and click over here. So I'm gonna click the update version and you can see this is the latest version uh, on my Unify or U6 Plus device. How you can confirm that this is the latest one? I'm going to show you right now and I'll just click on confirm right now so you can see how the process is and you can see that the status right now it's updating. Keep in mind when you update the firmware of a device it's going to shut down or reboot the device. So let's say you're running not just access points but maybe something more critical like switches. Well, uh, be ready for some downtime, be ready for issues as well. Uh, be very careful just do this on after hours or if you're running something really critical when um, make sure that you won't have any issues and plan accordingly okay now again how you can check that this is the latest version well you have the uh, ubiquiti site to check all the downloads if i go here um this is ui.com slash download you can just look for the device that you have and it will um, list all the available firmware updates here i have a u6 uh, plus so if i search for u6 plus i'm just gonna Scroll down a little bit here. And now I can see the different versions I have available to uh, download. So I have these three uh, versions. I also have the network application in case I want to uh, manage this, this device. I already have this, but basically I had this version before and now I'm upgrading to this one. So yes, my Unify controller basically connected to the Unify server and found the latest one. There are some times that this doesn't happen, that maybe there are some connectivity issues uh, with your Unify controller, it can reach the Unify server for the uh, updates, but for some reason it doesn't find the latest updates and maybe it says, yes, your Unify uh, device is up to date uh, and you can do manual uh, updates. Now let's go back to the Unify controller. You can see that the U6 Plus right now is up to date and working. And if I just click over here, I can see that the latest version is working over here and everything is good, everything is working, okay? Now I want to show you, let's go back to this uh, FAQ site for Unify, and you can see it says updating via the device property channel. So basically what you can do with, with this is to specify 
on the device, which version you want to do and do it on the uh, GUI of the Unify controller. So let's do this. I'm going to show you all also something that uh, you can do in case you want to downgrade the firmware of your device. That's possible uh, in case there are some issues with a newer one and you just want to downgrade. I'm going to pick the one that was previously installed on this um, Unify device. The only thing that you need to do is just do a right click on the download link and copy link address. And then we are going to go to the Unify network application. Again, this might be a little bit different um, from what I see here. Maybe on your controller is a little bit different. If I go here and I go into settings, scroll down, and I can see that the manual firmware update um, is available here. If you have the automatic um, option for the firmware updates, this option will be grayed out. So if you want to manually manage all the updates for your uni Unify devices, you will need to um, disable that option. Now, if I click here, it asks me, hey, where is the um, firmware located? And what I'm going to do here is just going to paste this and then click on update. And pretty much what is going to happen is the same thing uh, when I did the uh, upgrade to the newer version, the device will go into the uh, download part and then reboot and do a few things. If everything goes, goes well, basically uh, I will downgrade to the older version that I had previously. But the process is pretty much the same if you want to upgrade. Okay. While we wait for this, I want to show you something else. There is something that you can do in case you want to um, save the firmware as a firmware version in your network application. Basically, it's called update cache. So let's go here and it's explained uh, over here. Uh, in a nutshell, it will um, save the firmware version or the firmware version, version that you choose in the network application. So it, let's say you have. 10, 50, or 100 uh, access points on your environment. So it could be switches as well. It could be any other Unify device. They don't have to download the firmware every time from the Unify server. So connect to the internet, download the um, firmware update, and use your bandwidth. Basically, you will save the update on your network application, and the devices will look in the network application for those updates. And if you want to do this, um, just use the device updates and settings. Uh, option and you can see that I have here on the advanced part I have the uh, schedule I'll explain this later but you have here the version uh, that can be cached and if you click here it will say hey I have this version now and it will tell me the size as well of course be careful with this because you don't want your network application to fill um, so the, the free space I mean so be careful with this you want you want to cache Oh, if you have a lot of devices and want to cache a lot of versions, you can increase the size of your network application depending on which one you have. Okay, perfect. So that's for the cache method. Now, if I go here, you can see now it's telling me again that I need to update. This is because it did a downgrade, uh, a downgrade. And you can see now it's showing up that version that I had before. Um, now let's talk about the schedule for the updates. So if we go again to device updates and settings, I can create a schedule. Uh, what I want these updates uh, to be done. You can just name this like, uh, let's call it rating one, and you can choose the time for this, 12 a.m. It's a good time. And then you can choose the um, a schedule, it could be advanced, repeat every uh, one day. You can change this day, week, month, year. It has a lot of uh, settings here, and I think it's really good because you can create different um, rings of updates. If I go and click next here, it will ask me, hey, which device you want to add this? So you can create like different rings. Uh, let's say you don't want to update everything at once. And maybe let's say, let's just update a few access points that are non-critical first, see how it goes. And then you can create another ring or have another ring for the most critical um, access points after the other ones are working fine and they don't have any kind of issues. Same thing applies for any other Unify uh, device like switches or uh, things like that. So it, you can basically uh, segment the updates. And like I mentioned before, switches are maybe more critical. You can just use another uh, update ring for your switches. Okay, let's close this and let's jump to the other part where I will show you how you can do updates with SSH, which sometimes you need because it's really um, important. Maybe you have an issue with your controller and you can, this doesn't work. There's a problem with this method and you can do updates with SSH. Okay, let's begin with the SSH method. Now, keep in mind, and this is mentioned by Ubiquiti, this is not officially supported and only do this if UI support requests you to do this, okay? 
All right, perfect. Now the first method for the SSH um, update is if the device has internet connection. Okay, that's it's pretty straightforward. We will do that one. The other one is if the device doesn't have internet access, you will need to copy, download first the firmware to the computer that you're using and then move or copy the firmware to the unified device. I'll show you that later. Now let's begin with this one, pretty straightforward. You just need the firmware link, the same one that we used before. So I have here and I will just copy this one. Now something for you to note is the only command that you need to use is upgrade, but you need to connect with SSH. Now if I go here, I will just use PowerShell to connect with SSH. And now with PowerShell, you just use the SSH command. This is my username, okay? My device has been adopted by a unified controller. If you need the credentials for this, you can just grab them from the unified controller. And then we just enter the IP of the device. Now I'll just press enter and it's going to ask me for the password. I'll go here to the unified network and I click here. We have all the details. We go to settings. Actually, sorry, I'm, I'm wrong about this. I go over here into device updates and settings and I have here the SSH authentication. In previous versions, you may find this on the settings of your unified network application. So I'm just gonna show this, copy, and then go back to PowerShell, paste. And now I'm connected over here. I can see this is the current version, just like the same thing that the controller is telling me. Okay, perfect. Now I just need to type upgrade and let me grab that link again and click here, boom, and there we go. Just missing a space over there. Perfect, just press enter. Now keep in mind, the connection will drop and it's not going to show the same thing if you're doing um, as if you're doing the upgrade with the unify GUI and the network controller. Okay, now you can see that the connection has been closed. And if I go to the network application and I upgrade this, it may tell me that the up the device is completely off. So be careful with this. Now I'm just gonna wait a little bit and I might see that the device will go completely off. Let me just stop the recording here and I will uh, get back once everything is updated. All right, and now the device is back to live. The device was showing grid out completely. So again, it's not like, it won't show you like a progress bar if you do the uh, upgrade from SSH. Um, so be mindful of that. Now it's up to date. Something that I didn't mention before, let's say that you don't have a controller because the device was not adopted and you need to connect to the device with SSH. Now, instead of using the, uh, the SSH credentials that you found here, you just use the default credentials for any unified device, which is UVNT and UVNT, okay, for user and password. All right, so that's the first one. If the device has internet access, really straightforward. You just connect with SSH, use the upgrade command, and you use the download link that is provided on the um, Unify or Ubiquiti website. Now I'm going to show you in case that the device doesn't have internet access, how you can do the offline upgrade method. Okay, and for the offline method, we just need to do a few more steps, but we are going to use SSH and now we are also going to use SCP. You can just use the built-in SCP of PowerShell or the terminal one in macOS and Linux, or you can just use a tool, for example, like WinSCP or Mobax Term. They have uh, SCP tools where you can just upload the file that you want using uh, SSH and SCP. And you have here what you need to do, what you need to uh, enter over uh, or with SCP. Now, the first thing that you need is to download the bin file just um, from the same place. Instead of copying the link like we did before with the other methods, you just download the file. Now copy the, the uh, complete path of that file because that's, it, um, that's what you will need to use. So let me just go over here and I have a PowerShell um, option here. Now, if you, depending on the open uh, SSH version that you have on or that is running, um, you may have an issue if you just run SCP without a switch. Uh, if you just run SCP like this, this is the path of my pin file. I will just press uh, the space key one time. Let's enter the username, the SSH username. Again, if you didn't adopt uh, the device with any network application, remember, it will be uh, just UVNT and U UVNT for user and password. Uh, let me enter the IP. And now I need to copy this. Okay, this is the 
um, the location, it will be the temp folder and the file will be called this way. Okay, so just copy this and enter this here. I'm missing the two dots, the columns. Okay, there we go. Now, if I just use the switch, I'll press enter. Let me grab the SSH password. There we go. Now you can see I have a, an error over here. Uh, again, this is something related to the uh, open SSH versions version that you're running. If you need to fix this instead of using this command, you need to use just one switch, okay, which is dash O. Okay. Copy this, boom, and paste. Now I can see now that the file was uploaded. Now let's connect with SSH. Because I want to see if the file is there. Okay. There we go. And let's move to that folder. Now we can see, let's see if the file is here. Okay. Now I can see the file over there. Now let's say if you want to really check, uh, we can use this switch. Because I want to confirm that the time, date and time, uh, matches the uh, my current time. So basically with this, this is the file that I uploaded and it's not uh, a VIN file that was uploaded uh, before maybe with a con by a controller or something like that. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do, keep in mind about this, this is a warning about um, another unified device. I just need to run this command. Let me go here and there we go, enter. And now you can see that the connection just close. Pretty much what is going to happen is the same thing as the other methods. Uh, the unified device will restart. And then at some point it will be uh, showing here again right now because probably it didn't restart it yet. I can see it here, but probably in a, in a minute or two it will be grayed out. Um, and I just need to wait a few minutes. And well, now you can see there it's grayed out. Just gonna, I'm going to pause the video here and then I will show you once it's finished. Now we are here again at the console. The Unify access point is showing green. If I click over here, I can see that the version that is running is the one that I uploaded to the device and everything is going well. Okay, so that should cover the offline method. If I go here now, I showed you the SSH methods with an access point and switches. Keep in mind that with the console, um, the process is similar, but there are a few details um, over there. But again, it's just uh, getting the link of the bin file and you will see here, uh, it's just a different command, but it's also using SSH. And you can do also the offline method and it will be uh, basically uploading the bin file and then doing the upgrade of the device. Again, uh, there might be a few other details, but the process is really similar. Just another thing that I want to mention, uh, sometimes if there is any device that it com is completely down and you cannot uh, do anything with it, you can use the recovery mode. I'll cover this on another uh, video, but sometimes uh, when none of this works is when you, you want to use the recovery mode before submitting to um, your vendor in case nothing works. Well, folks, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time and for watching this video. I hope that this helped you to upgrade your Unify devices. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up here in YouTube. Subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications if you want to receive notifications for uh, the new videos that will be uploaded to our channel. If you have any questions, comments that you want to add here, like tips or something like that, or maybe a request for future videos, just drop that in the comment section. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Uni hosted video. Bye bye.